Hi, my name is Molly and welcome to Art Around the World. Today we are going to travel to China to create our own Chinese watercolor painting. Let's go! Today we will be creating our very own Chinese inspired watercolor painting like these. Chinese landscape painting, or Chinese watercolor, is one of the oldest traditions in the world. The Northern Song period, which was from 907 AD to 1127 AD, was known as the Great Age of Chinese Landscape. In the north, artists depicted mountains with long brushstrokes and used short, dotted brushstrokes to create the look of rugged stone. In the south, rolling hills and rivers were created with softer, rubbed brushstrokes. These two kinds of scenes became the classical styles of Chinese landscape painting. Chinese watercolor artists often use a limited palette. Do you know what that is? That is when an artist will intentionally use less variety of colors to communicate their subject more simply and clearly. Many tints and shades of gray are used to give a Chinese watercolor painting a sense of depth. The artist might only use a couple colors other than gray to enhance their painting. Another color we often notice is the red in the chalk, typically printed in the corner of a Chinese watercolor. This is used when an artist signs a painting using his or her chop. A chop is created when an artist carves out a stamp using their initials or symbols associated with their name and prints it on their artwork. This is essentially their signature. Are you ready to create your own Chinese watercolor painting? You will need a piece of sketch paper, bamboo or watercolor brush, India ink or black tempera in a cup, water in a cup, watercolor paper or a thick piece of paper, styrofoam plate, scissors, a dull pencil, and red temper paint. Let's go! Hi! Now that you've gathered the materials, let's get started. Right now we're going to start with a practice sheet of paper and we're going to simply practice using our brush. Now I have a camel hair brush. You might not have something like that, a brush made of actual camel hair, but um, if you don't, you could use a watercolor brush and find one with a long tip on it. And I'm gonna show you what else I, I have. I have a paper towel for blotting. I have a cup of water. I have some diluted India ink. Um, so I put some water with some India ink. And if you don't have India ink, you could use temper paint. So I'm just going to start just kind of playing around because this is just a practice sheet. What happens if I press down and then lift up on my brush? What kind of lines can I create? Um, maybe um, when I tip my brush up and push down and then up again, I can almost get a thin leaf kind of shape. Okay, maybe I want to make a bamboo type lines, very thick, so I turn my brush completely on the side, and then I can just do this, like this, and give that bamboo look to what I'm creating. Oops, got a little blot. And it doesn't matter because this is just practice. So I want you to try to create as many lines as you can. Fat ones, thick ones, flowy ones, zigzags. Okay, experiment with mountains maybe, those mountain peaks. So your paper might not look like much, but this is just step one just to get you going so that you see that really the idea is just creating different lines. Now I'm, I'm going to go back over this and give it some um, value, see if I can make it look a little darker on these sides of this bamboo. 
So just have fun, play with it. Um, just enjoy and take it slow and relax. Okay, I think we're ready for step two. As you can see, I just got a piece of paper from this 11 by 15 inch watercolor pad that I had. You might have some thicker quality paper at home that you might wanna use. We've done our practice sheet. So now I'm gonna turn this just so you can see it better. You can turn it vertically if you want. You can turn it horizontally, but I'm at a better angle for you I have if we do it horizontally. So I have my camel hair brush. You can also use a watercolor brush. I have my India ink, and you can also use diluted temper paint right here. I have some water so that if I want to lighten up my paint, I can do that. And I have my blotting paper towel. You could use a sponge too. And so I'm going to just begin to, since I practiced a little bit, I'm kind of, I kind of know what I like. So today I'm going to do some bamboo because I think it's fun. So I'm going to make these bamboo segments kind of just put my brush completely on its side. Okay. And just doing those bamboo segments. Okay, so I got that. And for those segments, just to really emphasize that they're segments, I'm gonna turn my brush the other way and make kind of thin lines. I'm moving confidently, I wouldn't say too quickly, but I'm moving confidently because and it might you might go a little slower than me and that's totally fine. And so I always like these fun leaves that shoot off bamboo. So I am pushing just slightly with my brush, then down, then up again with my brush to a point. I'm doing the same thing on this side, up again with my brush. So I have those nice long leaves that those pandas like to eat off that bamboo. Okay, so just really simple design. It's kind of amazing the effect just a brush and some black ink and all the value that's created. Some dark parts and light parts and thin lines and thick lines. So maybe I'll make another bamboo stem. Kind of crossing over that first one. Okay. And I'll just make my brush. And that I've made a lot darker because it's going over top of the other one. So as we remember foreground and background, what's in the foreground is a lot darker, a lot of times are brighter even than what's in the background. And so we know that is this bamboo shoot is on top of the other one. And then maybe we'll do some more of those lovely leaves coming off there. Okay, so a lot of times these paintings were not complicated. They're very simple. I might just do one more um, leaf, maybe a little one over here coming off, and maybe one more here. Okay, so that is my bamboo painting. And so now we're ready for step number three. Okay, now we're ready for the Chinese chop. And as you guys remember, a Chinese chop is a symbol that represents your name or represents who you are. Um, it can be your initials. And remember, it always goes backwards. 
So if you're okay doing your initials backwards or if you need to look in a mirror to get it right. Um, but today I'm gonna use my dull pencil and I'm just going, maybe it's an animal that represents you. So um, maybe like cats. So I'm just gonna be creative here. Remember I'm going over my lines two times and I'm drawing into this square that I cut out from a paper plate. And here I am drawing into it. Just going deep in those grooves. And, okay, and maybe I'm gonna make my M part of this for Molly part of this mouth of this cat. So something a little different. But I'm going over my lines two times. So it has kind of a... Okay, I'm going to press down a little on those eyes. Okay. Put a little nose right here maybe. Put a smile there. So you can see my letter M for Molly, but it's kind of hidden. And maybe I'll do some whiskers. I always am trying to go over those lines twice. Okay, so I've gone over the lines two times for my chop. And what I'm ready to do now, I have some red temper paint and a pretty thick brush. And I'm just gonna go over my little chop or symbol for my name this tipper paint try to get every corner the best that i can pretty thick and i'm going to take this so move everything so you guys can see i have it in my hands like this holding it at the edges move down so I'm going to move down my painting and I'm going to put it in the corner. I'm going to flip it over and put it in the corner. I'm going to hold it down with one hand and rub. Rub, 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 rub. Okay. Now what are we going to find under this chop? Let's check it out. Okay. So there is my chop in the corner. And if you feel like going back in and filling it out, but um, you can do that a little bit. I can see where I want to leave those white lines. But I, and I see my, my little symbol in there. So if you feel like going back in with your brush, you can do that, fill it in. But leave those white lines because those make it really stand out. So now you've put your chop on your Chinese landscape painting or Asian landscape painting and if you want this is just an example you can put dowel rods at the top um, like this one you have dowel rods on both sides um, and then you could attach string to even hang it if you wanted or you can just hang it up like it is or put it put a large piece of matte paper underneath it black paper to kind of frame it in so I hope you enjoyed this project today of doing a Chinese landscape painting and creating your own chop. Hey.